Cliff Lawson is our judge. Um, I think almost everybody knows Cliff. And uh, he's been a member of Focus since 2003. And that's when he retired from his previous career. And he's been a lifelong hobbyist in photography, but when he retired, he was able to, to notch it up more seriously, began doing professional work in 1805, or uh, 2005. <laughs> um, Cliff is now a part-time professional photographer specializing in portraits of high school seniors, families, and corporate headshots, uh, supposedly headshots attached to the rest of their bodies. But he's been a member of the Professional Photographers of America since 2008 and has an ad two advanced degrees, such as Master of Photography, awarded for image excellence, and Photographic Craftsman, awarded for education to the industry. He's also uh, attended many of the PPA judges classes and has judged prior focus competitions. And I have asked him back in spite of his previous judging <laughs> for us. <laughs> so uh, many of you uh, are familiar with his current professional project of making photographs, portraits of military veterans. So far, he's photographed just over 100 veterans, including some members of FOCUS. He's entered several of those veteran images in the annual PPA International Print Competition. Every one of them has received an award. So uh, Cliff, if you want to espouse on any of those bio items that you sent me yesterday, please go ahead. <laughs> no, that uh, it's always embarrassing to have to write one of those things. You know? But no, you, you covered it. Well, thank you, Cliff. You've got a lot to be proud of. Thank you. Um, is everybody muted? Here's some background noise. Okay, uh, Bob, sounds, are you ready? Sounds like somebody's ready. television. <laughs> uh, Bob, are you ready to go ahead? Ready. Okay. Uh, this first one is called Magpie Flies. Oh, uh, Cliff, I think I mentioned to you at, when we were communicating, uh, it doesn't have to be long exposure, even though that's the theme tonight. So don't uh, disqualify anybody if it's not long exposure. And please do not uh, reduce anybody's score if it doesn't fit the theme. Okay, I uh, know I understand that, but then if it's if it's if it's supposed to be long exposure, but it's a bad long exposure, should I judge it as <laughs> as open? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, well, if it's a good if it's a good image that's not long exposure, I guess you could judge it that way then. <laughs> okay, well, this uh, I'm sorry. What was the uh, what was the title again? Magpie flies. Okay, magpie flies. Well, it's a great use of depth of field. Uh, the the blurred background is uh, is perfect for for a picture like this. Um, unfortunately, if if it's supposed to be long exposure, uh, it really just looks like a blurry picture. Um, it's uh, the photographer was panning with panning with the bird. Um, but it really just, it's not a good long exposure picture. Um, 
I have to give this a seven. Streaming veils. Great use of color. Uh, the color palette here with all the blues and then the little bits of um, orange, red that are down there in the left-hand corner uh, on the, uh, the color on the, on the right side too, a uh, color. Um, really a nice use of the long exposure, nice cottony water. Um, it's a little static. I mean, it's kind of centered. Uh, so that detracts a little bit, but otherwise it's really a nice image. I'll go, uh, this is a nine. Do you see any area of improvement? Well, the composition could be better. It's kind of dead center. You know, it's, the water's coming out of the top middle and it flows out of the bottom middle. Um, it's, just, it's just a case of maybe if the maker had moved off to one side just a little bit, it might have been a little more dynamic, but um, that, would be about, that would be the change I would make. So what did you say? Nine? Nine. 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 Metal snake eats a sunset. <laughs> Great color. Um, boy, the, the sky, uh, the, the color that's on the, the stonework down there at the bottom. Um, it looks also like uh, the blurring of traffic or something below there. Um, but a nice blur on the train. Great leading lines with the uh, the um, uh, electrical. The, I'm not sure what you call it. But all those the electric the poles there above the train. Uh, great composition. This this is a nine also. Very well done. What well, just could you suggest something to make it a ten? No. Okay. Some like it hot. Okay, I'm going to assume this is not a long exposure. Um, the color is great, I and mean, that that crimson, that red is that's really that's really nice. Uh, it's balanced against the green in the background there, so the cool greens against the red. But there's no real subject here. Um, it's, it's, um, I, I'm not sure how you would improve it. it. It's just kind of a picture of this the plant, but um, I'd have to give this an eight. It's, it's okay. okay. Well, Bob, we have two nines. Can we look at those? And That's Streaming Veils by Bill Williams. Is Bill here tonight? Uh, apparently not. I guess not. Okay, the next one is Metal Snake. Metal Snake Eats Sunset. That's Terry Hanford. This is a shot along uh, I-25, obviously the light rail. Uh, it is uh, headlights coming along the bottom on I-25. It was, was a sunset. I was just really struck how, you know, the structure of the light rail uh, and the trains cut you off from the, the sunset. So there's the title. Uh, it's actually uh, 10 exposures getting <coughs> put together uh, to, to make the whole train go all the length. It was only about, I think it was two or three cars. <laughs> oh, that's very clever. Good, good. Thank you, Terry. Okay, now we go into F8. Reflecting Mill. It's a very, it's a beautiful pastoral, pastoral uh, image. Um, 
the reflection's good. Cut you cut the whole reflection there in the in the pond. And yeah, there's there's detail there in the uh, in the water wheel in, in the inside that water wheel. I see detail, so that's good. And uh, uh, good composition. I give this an eight. You can you suggest any areas of improvement? Oh, maybe it's kind of you know it's it looks like it was maybe a cloudy day. I mean, a, a lower light angle. Um, there's nothing wrong with the picture. It's it it really kind of lacks impact. I mean, it's a nice picture. It's just a nice picture. Okay. Sunny morning. <laughs> the problem with this picture is, I mean, the exposure is good. Um, but it's so busy. You have to really look to find the tortoise in there. Uh, a much shallower depth of field might have helped, uh, although it's it's up, tied up against those reeds in the background. But it's uh, uh, it is so busy that the the subject is the tortoise, but it's it's almost camouflaged in there. Um, uh, this is a seven. Okay, we we did not have any nine or tens in the eight, so why don't we go on with the F11. Nighttime river cruise. A beautiful black and white here. This is, uh, it's very well done. And the long exposure is the, the headlights are of the, I assume the cars, vehicles, maybe boats, I don't know. In the, uh, I guess maybe that is in the water. But uh, nice detail along the arch in that bridge. Um, the little starburst in the lights, I don't know if that was done post or that was part of the exposure, but it really works. Um, this is very well done. There's detail over there in the, in the far right side. Um, it's a great black and white, nice whites, nice darks. Um, it's, this is very nice, it's a 10. It's a 10 for sure. Uh, blue on black. Is that right, Bob? It does have, Looks like it has kind of a blue cast to it. I guess that's the. Is Bob, are you there, Bob? <laughs> well, he pushes this, the. This is Carl. You are you are correct. This is blue on black. There is a very very slight blue tint to it, although okay. I don't know if it's coming through on Zoom or not. But yeah, um, there is a very slight blue tint. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. it Perfect. it is very slight. I, I thank you. Um, well, it's a very good long, ex uh, long exposure. Uh, it's the, the cottony look to the water isn't too soft. Uh, sometimes that people do that. It just, the exposures can be too long. Um, again, it's kind of static. Uh, it, it, the water flows out right, right at you. Um, it doesn't make it a bad picture. Um, a little more detail in the back. Let me see. Hang on. I'm going to. Let me just hold something over the back here. It might have been improved if there's just a little more detail in those trees back there or, or to have them lightened up just a little bit. They're, they're visible, but, um, but not quite. I do like the treatment around the edge, the little, the little framing treatment, kind of the sloppy border. I think that adds to the picture. Um, it's an eight. Waterfall along Secret Creek. <laughs> I 
I'm still here. I'm just looking. Well, definitely long exposure. Um, the water is uh, uh, very much a veil. I'm just wondering about the, the bottom here. We took it a little bit off the bottom. I'm not sure that really adds to the, uh, the picture. Uh, color's great with the, the warm color on the rocks. Um, I, give this a, I give this an eight. Happiness is a mountain stream. There's good use of color here. The, the greens of the, of the trees there in the background, and then as we get a little closer, it uh, looks like this might have been done in the, in the fall with kind of the golds in the trees, and then the gold and the browns in the, uh, in the rocks in the stream. Um, this is very pretty, and uh, I like the way the, the kind of an S turn there as the, as the creek comes toward us. Uh, I'll give this a nine. Well done. Aspen leaf whirlpool. This is great use of the color and uh, uh, almost an abstract, really. Uh, boy, the, the oranges and the and the yellows. It's not a real long exposure, but it does put a blur there in the in the whirlpool part there in the middle. So yeah, it's long exposure. Um, this is this is well done. Really, just it's a great study in color. I'll give this a nine. Thirsty. It's always good with uh, wildlife if they're doing something rather than just standing there. So this is great that you, uh, the, the maker caught the uh, uh, cheetah, yeah, yeah, cheetah, um, drinking. It might have been improved if we took a little off the top. That All that grass up there, I don't think we need. We do need the stuff at the bottom. That's the reflection of the, of the animal in the water. Um, well done. I give this, this is a nine. Well done. Life never stops going round and round. Yeah, I've been there. That's a, that's a cool shot. That's really, this is well done. The sky, there's, there's, there's movement in the clouds. Uh, the arch is uh, very well exposed, lots of detail in there, and then the headlights of the, and tail lights, I guess, of the cars um, going around. Uh, beautifully done. This is, uh, and I like the square crop. Uh, that's a 10. That's, that's really beautiful. I love it. Aegean sunset. Well, it's good. We, we don't have the horizon running through the middle, which which would not have been good in this picture. There's plenty of detail up there in the clouds. Um, sunsets are tough because we've lost a lot of detail over there on the right side. Um, yeah, actually, not as much as I thought. Looking closer, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good job of keeping that detail in there, actually. Um, but it, the image just kind of lacks impact. I mean, it's. Um, maybe a little later. Um, it's just kind of a standard sunset. I'd give, I'd give this an eight. No, it's, it's a seven. I'm sorry. It's a seven. Uh, 
Passing Notre Dame. Well, it doesn't look like that now. Yeah. Nicely done. Great time of day to take this picture. Uh, beautiful sky. The, the, the lights of the boats on, on the Seine, they're going past. The, um, and a lovely picture of uh, Notre Dame. It's, uh, this is well done. That's a 10. That's, that's, a, that's really a, uh, that's a postcard picture. Sunset on Cathedral Rock. Okay, here's my problem with this picture. If this was submitted as, I'm going to judge this as it's not a long exposure because if it's meant as long exposure, the water doesn't really show it. So I'm going to judge this as an open picture. Which in that case, good composition. Um, you placed out, uh, placed the rocks there in the upper right it's balanced by the tree on the left-hand side. Uh, and yet down there in the bottom, there's still plenty of detail in the uh, area that's in the shade, plenty of detail in the area that's uh, in the sunlight. So this, uh, the exposure is, is very well done to hold exposure in the sky, the rocks, and in the shadows. I'll give this, a, uh, this is an eight. So Bob should we go through the... F11, we have uh, three tens. That's a nighttime river cruise by Victoria Ashby. Uh, Victoria is here. Yeah, I took that obviously in Paris. <laughs> it was actually a colored photo and I changed it to black and white. I liked it a lot better in black and white. Yeah, I can see where that would be the case, too. I, I can kind of visualize this in color, but the black and white is dynamite. Good job. Thank you. Did you use a real small f-stop to get that, uh, the light flare? Yeah, and then I kind of, um, I added a little bit to it in post-processing, but there were flares already there. Yeah, those, that's... I just emphasized a little more. <laughs> Really nice nothing, one, Victoria. Nothing Thank wrong. You. Nothing wrong with retouching, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is "Life Never Stops Going Round and Round" by Sean Slade. I don't think he's here tonight, but he has a note. It said long exposure at at dusk of the Arc de Triomphe. Um, uh, ruined that uh, pronunciation. I wanted to get both cloud and car movement captured along with the architectural details of the arc. He didn't see it through his hand held, huh? No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> then uh, I have one more 10. Are you there, Bob? Here we go. Passing Notre Dame, a, another one by Victoria. Yeah, um, I did do that just as the sun was going down. And, um, you know, that's, that's about it. <laughs> I just, I did crop some off of the right side. Uh, there were some buildings over there to, to put more emphasis on the actual cathedral. But the boat just happened to be passing at that time. So, you know, what a beautiful building, and what a shame that I mean, that spire is gone now, the roof is gone. I know. That's just a real tragedy. Yep. See, that's uh, should we do the nines also, Bob? Or maybe not.
Victoria, I'm just curious what year you uh, took the photo and so amazing that you have it without, uh, obviously that photo image can never be taken again. Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> um, gosh, you know, we've been to Paris several times, but it was before the fire. It was about eight years ago, I think. It's a good photo, really great photo. Yeah, I, I save all of them. <laughs> Here Thank we you. have Happiness is a Mountain Stream by Gwen Patton. I think Gwen's here. Yeah, that was taken over Guanella Pass before from two somewhere from 285 to the top of the pass. It was very early in the morning. Well, thanks, Gwen. Nice shot. Thank you. Okay, Thirsty by Ellie Green. I think Ellie's here. One second, can you hear me? Okay, now I can. Now yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, that was taken um, in the um, Masai Mara last, last year, and we were in a vehicle, so it's kind of difficult to, to get the shot. And I know, I, I see what you mean about, you know, there's a lot of grass at the top. Um, but it was, it was kind of a difficult angle for me to shoot it from because we were just in this vehicle. But um, it, was, uh, it was amazing. There were actually two of them that went um, along to this little water hole to have a drink. So it was, uh, it was lovely to watch them for a bit. So, yeah. You probably did not use a wide angle lens. <laughs> I, I didn't use a wide angle. I think I used my 100, 400, I think, yeah. If you got any closer, you probably wouldn't be able to show us the image. Huh? Right, right. You're right. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you know, you could, I'm looking at this image again. I think a much tighter crop on this, maybe even getting rid of that reflection. Um, Do you think? Really? Yeah. Well, you don't know until you try it, but the grass above, right. the grass above doesn't help it at all. Right, and, right. And yet well, the, actually, that yeah. face... With the tongue in the water, uh, depending on the resolution of the of the camera, uh, that that might be a great image. Really. Okay. Well, that's. Good. I'll, I'll have a look at it again. I know I I it was a I did crop quite a lot anyway. So, um, but sure, I just I can have another look at that for sure. That's a good idea. Because you always want to look at the picture and think if there's if what's in there doesn't help the picture, get rid of it. Right. And all that, all that grass above, you don't need. Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't crop in from the right side to crop out the tail. Right. Oh, no, the, I understand that. Yeah. Maybe up close to the tail and then right up close to the, right up close to the bottom. I mean, that might be a re, that might be a really dramatic picture. Yeah. That's great. Cliff. I'll have, I'll have a look at that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. This is Aspen Leaf Whirlpool by Bill Rothenmuir. Yeah, this I took near uh, Guanella, or near Kenosha Pass. And uh, there was an actual whirlpool there, but I added a few uh, of the better aspen leaves. <laughs> nice one, Bill. Thank you. Okay, we can go now to F-16. This is uh, up on top. <laughs> well, definitely not long exposure. This is uh, uh, really a great study in black and white. And the background is completely black. That's great. Uh, but yet there in the, if we look at that car up there, there's detail under the front bumper, detail under the wheel arch in the front. Um, all the bright spots still have detail in them. It's a great study in, in black and white. Um, 
I don't think there's uh, much I would change on this. Uh, I'll give this a nine. Acacia tree panorama. You know, you see this picture a lot in color. So this is really interesting to have changed this to black and white. And the, the haze or the fog really gives a lot of depth to this picture as, the, as you get farther and farther away. Of course, the, the trees on the savannah get dimmer and dimmer. Um, it's really, uh, it's, it's a beautiful black and white image. Um, the only area, this is not a criticism or a, a negative. The only area that's really black is that tree on the right. Uh, and everything else goes in different shades of gray. Uh, just about all of the shades of gray. It's really well done. It's, I'll give this a 10. That's a beautiful image. <coughs> Freeway at night, Denver. Well, congratulations for turning it to black and white because you see pictures like this in color all the time. Um, the black and white treatment to this is really well done. I don't, I don't see any detail, and this is a good thing, in the sky at all. So it's, a, it's pitch black. Um, I really like, I'll give this a 10. This is, this is very well done. This is a, this would look great on the wall. This is a beautiful image. 10. Halfway Station, Jackson, Tennessee. I love this. Boy, the, the blue and the red. Um, this is really well done. What a great study this is. And then the detail that's down there in the doors, the, uh, the, the blue cast on the parking lot in front of it from the from the banner up above. Um, this is a great architectural study. This is a, this is a great image, 10. That's, this is really well done. Wild fireworks. Yeah, it looks like a combination of a long exposure and a nervous photographer. Um, a little shaky, uh, some of those lines. Uh, it's a nice study of the of the fireworks. It it um, it's okay. It's, it's um, I give this an eight. It's 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 a good image. Uh, I'm not sure how we can improve it, but it's okay. It's an eight. Parade in motion. Well done. Uh, it's cool to see the, uh, the feet down at the bottom of the stationary, but all the motion above. I knew we were going to see a lot of uh, uh, waterfalls and, and creeks and traffic. Um, so this is this is a nice departure from that actual people moving. Uh, great, great color. Uh, I like this. This is this is very well done. Um, I wonder. Let me think. Let me. I'm gonna block part of this picture here for a second. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine. I'll tell you what would have made it a ten. If, in my opinion, if the maker had cut out that big red thing on the far right and just just kept the the blur motion up, up to the where that foot is at the kind of in the the center center right um i just kind of blocked that out and i think it makes a much much more impactful picture so nine 
Uh, yeah, nine. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> well, this is the 10. The color is outstanding. The, the sky, the, kind of the pink and the blue, which is reflected in the water, which is then the blue and then the pink, uh, and then the blue again at the bottom. Uh, obviously, a long exposure as, as the as the water moved and it blurred the reflections of the stanchions out there. Um, this reminds me of some of the stuff Kevin Holliday used to do, and uh, or I guess he still does. Uh, this is very well done. Be beautiful image, 10. Well done. Rock waves. Great color, again, uh, the red rocks um, combined with uh, the blue of the uh, sky in, in the background there. <coughs> Pardon me, let me get a drink of water here. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give this an eight. It's, um, I mean, it's a nice image the uh, the rock there in the front is kind of cut off on the right on the right side. I think that that rock I think comes to a to a, like a blunt end, and it's kind it's cut off. Um, and I mean it's it's a pretty image, but it just it just lacks some impact. Um, let me see. Hang on a second. If I cut off some of you know what would make this, I think, a, a better image? I'm blocking out the whole bottom half. Every, everything up to about the middle of that big rock in the middle. Then we've got some nice red rock there. Then you've got a, uh, you, a, a foreground. Then you've got a middle ground with those spires in the, in the middle. And then you've got a background. Uh, right now, that rock in the front just kind of overpowers the, it just kind of overpowers the picture and diminishes everything in the background. So it's pretty, but um, I give it an eight. Apprehension. This is a 10. Uh, great impact. The light is, uh, is breathtaking. A little catch light in the, in the buffalo's eye. Um, the crop is outstanding the maker put the put the buffalo eye up there in the in the third the third spot it's you're close to it it's uh this is this is outstanding 10 polka dot pinwheel a whirl <laughs> i'm sorry what was the last word a what a whirl, A W H I R L. That's the wrong title. Mm -hmm. Is is this evening sunset? Hey, Bob, Carl. That uh, appears to be Union Terminal. Oh, I'm sorry, Union Terminal. <laughs> You give me a low score, Cliff. <laughs> I can't read. I can't read my, uh, the. Theater. I give you get one job. <laughs> no one job. <laughs> okay. Um, great study in color. The blues and the kind of salmon pink. Uh, it's just. Uh, it is, I mean, the time of day was just ideal for this, for this picture. And then the way it, it's lit, um, hang on a second, let me see here. You know, I'm, I'm blocking out what I think are, 
I'm not sure what they are at the bottom. Those little white things, maybe those are vehicles. If you take those out, because your eye kind of goes down there, and, and it's, there's no real reward, but you keep my eye keeps going down. Well, what are those little things? Um, I'm going to give this a nine. It would have been a 10 without that stuff at the bottom. Just my opinion. Um, because the color, the composition, um, everything about this is wonderful, except those little things at the bottom that I keep looking at and wondering what they are. So nine. Okay. This is polka dot pinwheel a whirl. Well, that makes a lot more sense. That's for <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> I was sure trying to find polka dots in that station. Okay. <laughs> it was very cool. It's a, it's a, ends up being kind of an abstract. Um, the uh, center of it there, the axis is still and it's in focus and it's sharp and those polka dots as they obviously the farther up from the center they are the faster they're going the more they're blurred um, so it's a great use of the color and the composition is good putting the center up there in the in the upper left side uh, upper left portion so uh, uh, well done I'll give this a nine well done evening sunset as opposed to a morning sunset? <laughs> you could, the difference is quite noticeable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a real, um, it's, it is, and I'm sure the maker are meant to do this. It's kind of blurred and, and that's a compliment. I mean, it's soft. Um, it really gives a feeling of an evening. Um, there's detail in the, I'm still look close here, but there is detail in the, in the trees, the shrubs along the river bank. There's detail in that tree. Um, great use of the color with the kind of uh, pink sky, warm, uh, warm color there. Blue, the blues and the greens are the cool colors. Um, this is a very pretty picture. I'll give this a 10 also. Very nice. Water lines. Do you have that one? We still have one image to go. We don't need to use that one. Pardon me? Wasn't there one image to go? Yeah, water wines. I think it, I saw that on, uh, on uh, Bob's uh, right, that's what I saw too. list there at the end. Yeah. It's called water wines. Oh, okay. I see what that is. Okay. Well, it's, it's certainly, a, it's interesting. It takes a, it takes a little while to look at this and see what, and figure out what you're seeing. And now I see, yes, all those little pipes coming out there with the water coming off the ends. Okay. Uh, this makes for some great color. Um, I don't know what those little purple or magenta things are. Um, You know, it's, it's an interesting image, but uh, it's kind of busy. Uh, I'll give this an eight. I'm not sure what you could do to make it a nine. I mean, it's interesting. The color's great. 
uh, the composition's good. You didn't put the, uh, uh, where all those wands are coming from in dead center, it's on the upper third, so that's good. Um, it's, it's an eight. Okay, we have one for critique only. Okay. Um, did you ha have that one, Bob? I don't see anything in these here. Oh, maybe that's it. Uh, Bow Wave, this is by a new member. It's a uh, critique only. Okay. It's a, um, I like the, I like the, uh, the panoramic uh, crop of it, uh, that an image like this really cries out for a, uh, a long, uh, a wide crop. Um, the only place we're lacking detail is right smack in the middle of the sun and that's fine. There's, there's, you're not going to get any detail there. Um, only thing what really might improve this picture is that lower third and again this can be a problem with me viewing it on the laptop and we're not you know it's it's uh you got the compression of the internet and all that there's not much detail down in there and i'm wondering if you could bring just a little bit more detail out of that the the side of that swell toward us but other than that it's um it's really well done and the, and the color is superb the way you go from the, the blues at the top through the yellows and oranges and then back to the blues and greens and the water uh, and, and an excellent crop. I'm, I'm not sure if I, I'm not going to score it because it's for critique only. It would do okay. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't think it would score at the top of the heap, but it, it would be okay. I would definitely try to bring some detail out of that, the foreground, however. Thanks, Cliff. We've got uh, six tens in the F-16 category. This is Acacia Tree Panorama by Joe Benita. Yeah, well, <clears throat> this was um, taken some years ago in the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and uh, it's actually only a part of an even wider panorama, but I thought this made a better composition. And the haze is really dust. I mean, the dust is everywhere over there. And uh, uh, it's also part of the reason why African sunsets look so orange, because it lights up all the dust, in, and the sun lights up all the dust in the air. But this was originally a color picture that was uh, converted to black and white. Well, thank you, Joe. This is a freeway at night, Denver, by Nancy Meyer. I was taking a um, night photography class, and we were downtown wandering all over. We were on the Millennium Bridge, I guess it's called, and um, I took a lot of pictures, um, but not all of them worked out, and I was worried about the bright light in the almost in the center of the picture of somebody coming down the ramp, but uh, <clears throat> not much I could do about it. So I just hoped for the best. Well, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, that, that light is so small, it doesn't detract from the picture. Thank you. Uh, halfway Station by Todd Lytle. Thanks, Cliff. Appreciate the uh, kind words. Yeah, I didn't realize that was yours. This is a seven now. Oh. That's what I oh, thought. Okay, let me change. Not, not, not a swimmer in a pool. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry I'm going to take an extra minute, but I'm going to take an extra minute because um, this COVID thing has people, you know, canceling all their vacations and, you know, I mean, any number of people in the group had an amazing travel planned and and as photographers we we really live for 
the opportunity to just capture something new and different. I mean, I went to Cuba two or three years ago with Dan Greenberg and last year in Europe and, you know, none of that stuff's possible. But um, thanks to a very loving, caring wife of 31 years, um, on June 7th, um, she gave me the ultimate hall pass. And I got in my car with no agenda, with no destination, with no time limit, with no urgency. And I drove 13 states in 28 days, 4,883 miles, and there was only one rule. Not one mile could be taken on an interstate highway. And because of that, when I put in um, what I assumed would be my ne next destination into either my Google Maps or my Waze or my nav system, it would always take me these very, very circuitous routes. And um, was it Robert Frost said, um, I've taken the road less traveled and, um, and that has made all the difference. Um, this led me into a part of Tennessee called Jackson, Tennessee, known to the locals as uh, Old Jackson because Interstate 40 goes through Tennessee about 10 miles north of here. And that's, that's where all the hotels and, you know, all the fast food restaurants are and, and everything else. But a gentleman, Greyhound Service, stopped at this um, station a couple of years ago, and a, a wealthy gentleman, um, a, re a developer, has um, restored 26 buildings in Jackson, Tennessee, to their original grandeur. And that's, I believe, certainly the case here. This Greyhound station was built in 1938, but all of the lights that you see have not worked for 50 years until last year, uh, fall of 2018, I believe. Um, and he's completely restored it to its original, beautiful Art Deco history. And again, um, I thank my wife, because I, I would just call her a few days and say, you know, can I, can I take another week? <laughs> and um, all of her friends wanted to know why, how she got so lucky. <laughs> But uh, it was really, really something. The only thing that um, or the, I could add more, but I was talking to my daughter. Cliff knows my daughter, Lily, uh, and Lily's a great kid. Uh, but I was talking to my daughter, Lily, on the cell phone as I was driving into this scene, and it was starting to rain. And I realized one of my great many failures as a parent, uh, Lily's 23, and I said, Lily, I, I have to go it's starting to rain and there's a, there's a Greyhound station here and I, I need to photograph it. And she said, what's a Greyhound station? Oh, geez. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's part of American history, but there you have it. That's, that's really a cool story and good for you for doing it. But you know what I find most shocking is that Lily is 23. Yeah, I know. Cliff was photographing her as a pre ten year old swimmer, so um, <laughs> um, that's where I met Cliff uh, poolside. And, um, someday I'll bribe him by uh, showing his the pink shirt that he always wore, so the parents could find him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great Thanks, image. Cliff. Really, a great image, Todd. Thank you, Cliff. Thank and that was a great trip. And and I. You know, I enjoy being with myself quite a bit. So, um, <laughs> so it was me, myself, and I. Um, you know, I, I, it was it was unbelievable because it was in June, so it was kind of in the lull of this COVID thing. People were thinking it was, you know, heading the right direction. I I, I went through. I mean, I had virtual con contact with virtually no one along the way, and uh, I mean, I drove into cities like Asheville. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, at 10 o'clock on a Thursday morning next to the um, Carolina Panthers uh, Nissan Stadium. It's as big as our stadium. And, and there wasn't a single person within 10 blocks. And it wow. was the middle of the week. It was, a, it was a real twilight zone experience going from city to city to city. And 
there was no traffic. Certainly there was no traffic on the roads that I was on. And, um, it, it was a, it was an adventure of a lifetime. Yeah, it was cool. Did you laugh at your own jokes, Todd? I laughed at all of my own jokes. <laughs> um, and sometimes I, I think I went a couple hundred miles out of my way in order to, uh, avoid the interstate, but, um, I was very dogmatic about it. Um, very anal if you know me and um i was in memphis tennessee looking at the mississippi river and the i-40 bridge right there i mean i could just hop skip and jump over into arkansas but um that was out of the question and the nearest bridge was about 60 miles south um in in mississippi so so but i wanted it was i was in no hurry and i had no agenda and it was it was amazing. I had uh, two, two days that I didn't even make it a hundred miles all day. 80, cool. 83 miles one day is as far as I made it. Cause I just stopped and stopped and stopped and stopped. And I'm hoping that you get to see some more of my images um, going forward. We're looking forward to that Todd. Did your, did your wife say when you got back home, you're back already? <laughs> well, the, the locks were changed. I don't <laughs> care about that. Okay. And um, yeah, uh, I was home about a, about a week and she said, you got any place else you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's. Cliff knows my wife too, so oh, and, he, and more importantly, most of you know me, so you know you know you know that that's a that was a win. That's the best thing I ever did for my marriage. Thirty-one years. <laughs> Leave for a month. This is uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi by Butch Mazuka. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't always work this thing right. Uh, <clears throat> that's a tough act to follow. Um, <laughs> the reason it was named One Mississippi, Two Mississippi, that is a bridge, or that is a dock that was taken out by Hurricane Katrina along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And I have forgotten, I didn't have a watch and I didn't have a uh, iPhone. So when I timed it, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three <laughs> Mississippi, and it was shot in Mississippi. I thought it was a good title. <laughs> that is good. Hey, Butch, this is Cliff. Did you, did you use a neutral density filter? Or how did you get such a long exposure? Um, you know, <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sure that I, I I'm, I'm reasonably sure that I did because I would have done the calculation. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Kevin Holliday because he's the one that turned me on to those Lee filters. Yeah. And I know that I made the calculation with either the six stop or the 10 stop. And that's why I knew how many seconds. And I said, oh, shoot. Enough. And the light was changing. <laughs> oh, so I yeah. just had to do the one Mississippi two, and it worked out. But well, I'm reasonably light... sure I used one of those two filters. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nicely done. Oh, thank you. Good to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Butch. Uh, this is Apprehension by Guess Who? Joe Benita. Well, it, it, if I were actually that close, I'd have been apprehensive. Uh, this is uh, taken in, uh, let's see, where was this? This is probably Tanzania. And um, the water buffalo over there had just taken its face out of the water and that's why it's kind of dripping. Uh, and it really looked apprehensive with the eye. The eye just struck me. This is handheld with a, uh, one of those 150 to 600 millimeter Tamron lenses on a subframe. So it's effectively 900 millimeters. Yeah. Uh, and you had to do it handheld because if you tried to do anything in the Jeep, which is what you were in, every time somebody moved in the Jeep, it joggled your, you know, your uh, 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 unipod or whatever. 
So handheld was better. And uh, it's about a 250th of a second. Um, really a good lens. This is the first iteration. I guess the second iteration of that lens is even better. But mine now, for some reason I don't understand, is the autofocus is become erratic. And I got to send it in somewhere to get it fixed. That's a great image, though, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, this is Butch. That's the best Cape Buffalo image I think I've ever seen. Oh, well, thank you. That is you know, really So cool. many of these images are accidents when you're out there in the field in Africa. No such thing. <laughs> this is uh, Sunset, e Evening Sunset by Lee Ermey. Is Lee here tonight? Yep, I'm here. Good. Uh, that was taken a couple of summers ago down in, near the town of La Vida. In fact, I was just southeast of La Vida. I was trying to get some pictures of uh, some of the arrays that they have, that they have volcanic flows that from uh, the twin sisters that uh, at La Vida, Twin Spanish Peaks. On the way back, I came across this lake. I think it's a water supply lake that there were people fishing along it. And, but it was just after sunset, the clouds were kind of pinkish and it was a little bit of fog coming up from it. And so this is my picture. So Lee, is that soft look from the fog that was there? I mean, it's got this, it's got this really beautiful, soft, almost like a soft focus look to it. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of mist and I actually softened it a little bit more. Okay. Because I, I liked the look of it and I just added a little bit more soft feel to it. Yeah. To make it, I don't know, more moody. Well, yeah, and I think that really adds to it. I think it's, in fact, that's what really draws me to the picture is that soft, I, th I think I think if this had been really crisp, it wouldn't have been that good of an image. I agree. I, I think that uh, this gives it a more romantic feel. Yeah. Also. Well, you're a romantic guy. The... You're a romantic guy. <laughs> Well, with a with a kind of pink sky back there, and the haze lighting up the top of those mountains. Yeah, it all worked, uh, man. It was a fortunate fortunate time to be there. That's, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it worked. Thanks, Lee. You're welcome. Well, we've that's all the tens we have. Should we go through the nines? We have some time. We have one, two, three, four, four nines. This is up on top by Dan Greenberg. I don't know if Dan's here. What a shock, a car picture from Dan Greenberg. Jeez. Taking it, his note, taking it car hinge, black and white done in silver effects. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Car Hinge. It's up in uh, Nebraska. I, I recognize this right away. <laughs> yeah. It's a actually, it's much better in black and white because a lot of times these things have weird colors painted all over them. Uh, but most of it, originally, it was all it was all silver painted before they put it together. It is a kind of a unique place. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's in Alliance, Nebraska. Yes. This is a parade in motion by Oz Spenninger. Yeah, I took this in uh, Geneva during a parade. 
and this is actually handheld a six a sixtieth of no sorry six seconds and parts of the people were moving and parts were not um, there was light at the top uh, probably forty percent from the left side which I out and substituted something else and it just uh, happened that way um, I like the the red on the right um, personal matter um, that's about it it cropped some and that was probably a um, wide angle lens uh, equivalent of a 24 millimeter uh, crop sensor so well, that's it. Thanks, Az. This is a Union Terminal, also by Todd Lyle. Also, also for my trip, um, I said I had no agenda at all. Um, my family lives mostly in Ohio, um, and so that was definitely a destination I was headed towards. Uh, this is Union Terminal in Cincinnati, which uh, again was built in the Great Depression and finished in 1933, but Almost no sooner was it finished uh, uh, in the 1950s. Basically, train travel, you know, was 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 declining. It sat empty for several decades, and um, uh, a number of the larger museums in Cincinnati put their efforts together and raised money um, in order to um, make it a museum center. So there's five or six museums there, a library, there's an Omni Max. Um, theater there and um my mother my own mother was one of the fundraisers that sat on a board of one of the museums so it, it had a special um i'm from cincinnati originally uh I, I, the, those things at the bottom cliff are just part of some fountains and things and i think you're right i think i could have cropped it a little tighter um so i'm i'm just fine with that criticism but um it was a very it was just a very special trip again and uh, Cincinnati, I, I had never driven to Cincinnati in the 34 years I've lived in Colorado. Um, and again, this just made it part of that um, Todd's uh, Roads Less Traveled uh, adventure that, you know, was, 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 was so amazing. But um, uh, it's a true, it's a National Historic Register now, it's, um, it's, it's truly an iconic piece of, uh, Art Deco architecture, and I'm so thankful that um, Cincinnati came together to to save it because so many of these kinds of things are are lost, um, and they, and they certainly can never be rebuilt. True. It's really good, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Now we get to the polka dot. Polka dot pinwheel a whirl. That's Nancy Meyer. I'm not sure where I took this, but I think it was at Fairmount Cemetery uh, in an area where there are a lot of uh, children's graves. And so you find a lot of toys and things there and the wind was blowing and I thought, oh, this should be a nice picture. So I took it. It is very nice. Well, that's, that's all we have for tonight. Well, I, I guess we're done. Uh, you have any parting words for us, Cliff? No, it's always fun to, to judge focus because the, the level of talent in this club, I've, I've judged other clubs too. And, nobody else comes close to what what we see here the the breadth of talent here is really quite amazing so it's always fun and remember if you don't like the critiques these are all just my opinion doesn't mean i'm right 
just an opinion. I, I agree with Cliff. I've judged a lot of clubs also, and uh, Focus is by far the best. Yeah, just hands down. I want to uh, add something to what <clears throat> has been said before. I've judged at a number of clubs too, and the Focus people are the best, with, without a doubt. Yeah, you got a 10, Joe. Two <laughs> tens. It has nothing to do with that. It, it has, oh, it doesn't? Oh. No, it doesn't. It has to do with the uh uh you know the, the quality the, the quality of the people at focus, the quality of photographers at focus. Um but, yeah, I I might add to that that these are difficult times with this virus and being worried with us some of us old farts and with some health problems. But it, it kind of gets kind of difficult to to get the, I don't know, mojo or, or whatever together to, to take photos and to do things. Uh, so it's, I think we can support each other there and do as much as we can. Uh, you know, this will get over with someday. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to help each other. And this is a great session competition tonight. And Cliff, you did a wonderful job judging. I appreciate I'll put your check in the mail right now. And okay. so uh, this is, thank you for, for all your comments and, and uh, constructive criticisms. Oh, you're welcome. And the check will help my grandkids need shoes. So. Oh, okay. <laughs>